It's been six years since South32 was established, and in that time, our company has evolved significantly. Since day one, we have had a clear purpose, and that's to make a difference by developing natural resources, improving people's lives now and for generations to come, where we are trusted by our owners and partners to realise the potential of their resources. Our purpose guides how we will deliver our strategy of optimise, unlock and identify and remains fundamental to the decisions we make every day. I'm going to provide an update on our business today and our strategy going forward. Chief Development Officer Simon Collins will provide an update on our growth options. Chief Financial Officer Katie Tovich will provide an update on our capital management framework and balance sheet. And Chief External Affairs Officer Kelly O'Rourke will share an update on our approach to climate change. Talking first to our strategy, we have optimised our business with a strong focus on safety while reducing our controllable cost base and delivering an overall improvement in our operating performance and stability. We have worked to minimise our impact and we are on track to meet our first short-term target of holding our Scope 1 emissions below our 2015 baseline. We have also strengthened our relationships with the communities where we operate and developed a strategic community investment plan and impact measurement framework to ensure our presence makes a real difference. We are investing in our business through projects that increase production, improve energy efficiency and extend the life of our operations. We have developed leadership capability in our people and we are investing in innovation, improvement and technology to unlock value. We are significantly simplifying our business for the future and now expect to complete the sale of South Africa Energy Coal on 1 June. We also divested the Temco Manganese Alloy Smelter earlier this financial year and placed the Metal Alloy Smelter on care and maintenance. We have added multiple growth options to our portfolio and have a pipeline of greenfield exploration projects and partnerships with the bias to base metals. We have set new, medium-term targets to half our operational emissions by 2035 and we've identified decarbonisation projects that will help us achieve that. We are also unlocking value at our operations through projects including bringing our alumina refineries to nameplate production, improving energy efficiency at our aluminium smelters, growing nickel production at Ceramatosa through the QMP and Osmoc projects, and advancing studies to extend the life of Genco and bring forward higher grade material at Cannington. At Illawarra, we are assessing the IPC's decision on Dendrobium Next Domain and we will be clear on our pathway forward by the end of the calendar year. We have started repositioning our portfolio for a low carbon future. Exiting thermal coal is a transformative milestone for South32. With fewer operating sites and reduced headcount, we are a significantly simpler company. Taken together with the divestment of Temco and with metal oils being placed on care and maintenance, we will halve our Scope 3 emissions and we will substantially reduce our capital intensity, increase group margins and have greater balance sheet flexibility. When we made the decision to exit South Africa Energy Coal, the vision we had for the business was twofold. Firstly, we needed to put the business on a pathway to be sustainable for the benefit of its employees, customers and communities, and continue supplying South Africa's energy needs for years to come. Secondly, we were seeking a black owned and operated company to acquire South Africa Energy Coal, consistent with South Africa's transformation agenda. We're pleased to have achieved this vision through the transaction with Seredi Resources. Beyond the divestments of South Africa Energy Coal and Temco, we have been actively repositioning our portfolio to increase our exposure to base metals that are critical in the transition to a low carbon world. In Arizona, the Hermosa team are nearing completion of the pre-feasibility study for the Taylor zinc, lead and silver deposit. The team there is also progressing a scoping study for Clark, 
a zinc, silver and manganese deposit, where we are evaluating the potential to produce a manganese product used in electric vehicle batteries. These two projects offer the potential for long life developments and we remain optimistic that additional discoveries can be made at Hermosa with 15 regional prospects identified across a large mineralised land package. The Ambler Metals joint venture in Alaska, where we have a 50% shareholding, is progressing a pre-feasibility study for the high-grade Arctic copper and zinc deposit. There are also several regional targets that are being tested in the 2021 exploration program. The Ambler Metals joint venture recently entered into an agreement with the Alaska Industrial Development and Export Authority to jointly fund pre-development activity for the Ambler Access Road, which will unlock the region. In addition, we are building our pipeline of opportunities by investing through the drill bit. We currently have more than 20 greenfield exploration partnerships and projects targeting copper, zinc and nickel, predominantly in the Americas and Australia. All of these projects create an exciting opportunity to transform South 32 for the long term. As Simon mentioned, the divestment of lower returning businesses will increase our balance sheet flexibility. With this increased flexibility, we will continue to allocate capital in a disciplined manner, consistent with our capital management framework, and prioritising safe and reliable operations and an investment grade credit rating. This approach, which has been unchanged since day one, underpins the delivery of our strategy and ensures our balance sheet remains strong. Our approach is designed to support investment in our business and also reward our shareholders as our financial performance improves. This has been demonstrated today with the announcement of a further 200 million US dollar increase in our capital management program. At the same time, we will continue to invest in improvement and life extension projects across our portfolio, from Ceramatozo to Cannington to our aluminium smelters. We will continue to prioritise this balanced approach to capital allocation into the future as we advance our growth options beyond their study phase and into execution. Our capital management program is flexible with the intention to return capital to shareholders as efficiently as possible. This means we will continue to appropriately balance the return of excess capital, either by special dividends or through our on-market share buyback, the latter delivering real, permanent value to our shareholders over time. Our business is in a strong position and we intend to ensure our balance sheet remains strong. This will enable us to pursue our strategy with confidence, including delivery of our exciting growth opportunities as we transition our business to a low carbon future. To tell you more about this, I will hand over to Kelly. Today, we are pleased to announce our plan to halve our carbon emissions by 2035 and our commitment to reach net zero by 2050. We will deliver this target through decarbonising our existing operations, securing green energy, designing our growth projects to be carbon neutral and low carbon technology. The detail underpinning this target will be provided in September as part of our annual reporting. Today, four of our operations generate about 90% of our emissions. They are Hillside Aluminium, Moselle Aluminium, Worsley Alumina, and Illawarra Metallurgical Coal. There are opportunities at each of these operations to reduce their carbon intensity. We are looking at options to reduce emissions from our refineries and smelters by transitioning to green energy. However, this will take time. In the short term, we have set ourselves quantitative and qualitative targets to reduce our carbon footprint through investing in efficiency projects, applying low carbon design principles, and evaluating carbon reduction technologies. Beyond our operational emissions, we are working with industry partners to reduce emissions at every step of the value chain which will contribute to a reduction in our scope three emissions. We will work together with our people and communities as we undertake this transition to create a sustainable future. Our approach to climate change is fully aligned with our strategy and the capital allocation priorities that Graham and Katie have spoken to. It is also aligned to the reshaping of our portfolio to focus on the commodities that will be required 
in a low carbon future. We have a plan that will deliver significant reductions in our carbon footprint in line with our goal to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. When I think back on the year that's been, it's important to recognise that it's been incredibly challenging. Each of us has faced our own unique set of challenges. I've been proud to see our people around the world unite and show immense courage and resilience in the face of COVID-19. As we look to the future, we have a great foundation to build from with well-performing operations, a strong balance sheet, high quality growth options and attractive metals, and a plan to decarbonise our business.